I stand alone, not on my own. I sell the issue once again, but then I'm home. My name's Claire, I'm 42 years old, originally from London. I'm home with you, I walk you back and forth again, but then we're home, just on my own. I'm Darren Jones Ledger, big issue fellow. I worked at the Metropolitan Police in Wimbledon for about 16 years. Um, I had a nervous breakdown. The social security wouldn't help me and my mortgage protection plan didn't cover me, so I lost everything, really. You moved all the bins, as you do. With that, people won't come in because they just think it's a pile of bins. We made a little entrance in there. We spent about five nights there, yeah. you know, with the rats running along the wall behind you and stuff, you know, because obviously it's been areas. Two o'clock in the morning, you're lying here. It's not, imagine you're in your house, you've got the lounge, you leave the lounge door open and you never know who's going to open your lounge door. And then there's someone who don't even know, hello, absolutely paralytic, we're sleeping here, we're cornered in a way. Group of lads, you have to, you have to be, Quick on your feet and move and just see what the situation is, judge the situation and move on. But Darren never slept because of me anyway, and he always slept with one eye open. We got to, yeah. Mentally, I, I can't deal with the, the negativity of it all. I mean, I've been spat at, I've been, I've been assaulted, everything. Urinated on. When we started staying here, we made the mistake of telling a couple of people. Yeah. But with them being on drugs, they left needles here. So now they put this lock on it, which shuts so no homeless people can sleep here. But they used to bring this coffee out. The security guards were really They crying. used to kick that door there and say, look, you know, we'll be woken up. But again, if you look at it, it's warm. You know, and also, because you're down here, and you're, you've got to remember, you're below a wall, and no one can see you. You've got this, all this, all this, you always think all this, the sides are all boarded up, so you're safe. So basically we try and find a route that people won't use, because they're all going to wee round here. This is our little bed. <laughs> when you come in somewhere like this, you can't just talk at night. You can't just be loud, you've got to be quiet. So you're whispering all the time, because the drunks are walking past. If they hear you, they're going to come and kick your head in, basically. So we have to sneak round here. All right, be careful. Round the screens. Yeah, this is where we check. We've had it where there's been six of us sleeping here. Another bloke and a, a woman, me and Claire, and two fellas. All the sleeping bags, which you collect, blankets, you know, you get from soup runs and all that from churches. Good sleeping bags are very hard to come by. You finally get a good, good amount of stuff to keep warm, especially in the winter months. You come back, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, you've it's gone. You've been burgled. And you've been burgled, <laughs> yeah. And it's the council, and they say it's because it's fly tipping. And I said to the guy, you know it's our stuff. He said, well, we've been told by our guy to chuck it and you, you trust me it's one o'clock in the morning and you've got to lie on this especially on a saturday i used to make sure that anything that was left that i did have a nice little bag you know, last weekend so at least they had some food you know it costs you money standing there eating and drinking because people think oh he's all right oh we can afford to smoke and so could you if you pick him off the floor you know I was given a coat, and then someone walked past me and said, oh, he's all right, he can afford a jacket like that. How does he get the money? And they just don't even think. Basically, we went over to uh, actually start begging, which isn't great, but... Hey, it was horrible. <laughs> it's probably Claire, because obviously Claire working for the police, it wasn't something that came natural. <laughs> <laughs> but we basically... Had to, and also, this Wagamania, we used to, now and again, we used to get the Wagamania food, which is noodles, which is right pot. So we used to do well. Well, you have to sleep on this road. We had to, this is it. We slept here for, what, two or three months? Well, about two, two months, months, three months we spent here. And basically, at night, we were sleeping here with our blankets over us and our duvets, and they'd be coming past drunk and pull all the blankets off us and, you know, throw drinks on us, throw rubbish on us, um, salt us. Every kickers, while we're sleeping, everything. You know, get up. But you have to put up with it. 
And then we used to leave the hat out on this step here, just leave the hat out, so hopefully when we wake up in the morning, we might have a cup of coffee ready. Went from there, sleeping in the woods and everywhere, to actually a friend of ours taking us in off the street. And um, we've been there ever since. But it's nice to just relax, you know, to be able to relax somewhere. And uh, just you're out in the elements, you know. The big issue, so a very nice man. Three teenagers basically murdered him. Um, when the street services come around and check on where we sleep in the mornings, or where we used to sleep out, check here. They found him with a shopping trolley still on him, where they smashed him and you know, killed him. And so, uh, God rest his soul. Very lovely man. We've been lucky we've got each other. You know, so, and we'll get back to how we were before, you know. It's been a long, long haul though, isn't it? Yeah, that's what, yeah. You, know, you lose, you look, your relationship's gone. You know, you've got to struggle, but you cuddle up again, you know. We've both seen as quite vulnerable on the streets. Me with my depression, and I'm diabetic as well. Darren was diagnosed with psychotic schizophrenia. He was on medication, and he's done really, really well. There's a local doctor that's sort of got hold of the pair of us and he's going to help us get housed. When you sit there all day and you, or you're people watching all day and you see people and you see them sort of like come home from work and then you see them go and get their tea and then you see them get ready to go out and then get their money from the cash point and go out then you see them when they're out and you're sitting there watching life and you're not involved. And most of these homeless people, they look like, you know, like, like me, I had a beard, you know, I was unshaven, I was dirty, smelling, look, look right under a blanket with coins in front of me, sitting there with my head down, and now you know me, you know what I mean, come on, what's wrong? And every single one of them homeless people, they're like that. Once you put them in a the bath, give them a shave, got talking to them, you'll see that they, a lot of them, they cared so much, they got hurt so much. If you went round and chose ten homeless people, you'd have four that might be too far gone, but the other six you'd be absolutely amazed. Talent is in those people, and they're just, they're just giving up. And no one bothered. But then I'm home, just all along. I sell the issue once again. But then I'm back, and all along. I am not a cover, but then I am all alone. <laughs>